Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify, this being a show where we talk about TV shows of the supernatural, fantasy, and or science fictional genre. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Killjoys. So in this episode, a lot of interesting things. Obviously, we learned uh, last episode that Davin was heading home, and lo and behold, he goes to like kind of like this bunker slash cabin, and he was kind of expecting to pick up something, which we find out later on is like 50,000 joy his mom had left him. But it turns out who's there but their dad. Now I was curious about it too because their dad would start bringing up stuff about like how long it's been since he saw dad. And I was like, oh, are we completely ignoring that whole thing with him and Klein switching bodies back in season two? Was it not season two? I'm pretty sure it was. And I was like, oh, I guess they're not going to acknowledge that. And then he immediately goes, yeah, I had this, this crazy strange dream like a little while back. And he's kind of been going on a straight and narrow ever since that whole Klein thing. And the dad doesn't really tell him what's going on. He's just like, yeah, that's a crazy dream. And so, so I was like, okay, that's nice. Because it's just, it's on him to be like, yeah, I don't, like, I, he thought it was part of a dream and stuff. Because he was pretty drunk at the time. It's kind of a, his thing. But it's, he made it seem like he was okay. But I do like this episode. Like, obviously, it's a big, because we've heard bits and pieces about Johnny and Davin's past. Obviously, uh, Davin dealt with his past a little bit when he confronted his dad as Klein, but that's not to the fullest extent of like, you know, because it's it's allow it, uh, this episode allows them to kind of confront their past and make their dad see how much of a failure he was at what he did because it's something dad like his dad is like oh like constantly being like oh for one he likes to shift the truth and make it seem like oh yeah like dad joining the army it's like oh yeah because we had a good talking and I put him on the right path and he went up to the army it's like local kind of man you know he went in um. God, what's the word he used? A punk? And now he came out a man. And it's like, no, because we ended up learning from Davin. Like, the reason that happened is because their dad, being the drunk asshole he was, would constantly beat on Johnny. Because Johnny was a smart ass and probably said stuff that always got under his dad's skin. I guess maybe because on some level, maybe it's because of their mom. Like, maybe Johnny reminded him a lot more of their mom. And maybe that's what really irritated him. But Johnny's just a smart ass in general. Just kind of his cup of tea. And Davin would take some of the beatings for Johnny until, like, one time he had enough and fall back. Turns out that particular instance, it was his dad waiting for Johnny, and then Davin fought back. And his dad said, Sheriff was like, I will arrest you, or you can go to the army. So it's not like Davin ran away because he wanted to. Their dad literally gave them, like, gave him, like, two choices, you know, and Dav took that one, but he always regrets it because he left Johnny behind, no matter what the circumstances may be, but Johnny does say, like, you're an asshole because you never told me that, because if you told me the truth, I never, I never got the chance to say thank you for doing what you did, you know, you know, it, it, it adds a little more clarity to what, you know, the choice he made to just up and leave, because, you know, for Johnny, he didn't know all that, for him, it's just like, I get it, you took a lot from me and stuff like that, but I thought like you just up and abandoned me and left. But now it's like no, it's because our old man kind of gave you no choice, like you know. Because I guess for Davin too, it's like joining the army is a better option than being in some place where he's the sheriff and he still has all the full power and control. If you're in jail, you'd still suffer his wrath nonetheless, you know. And plus, he'd be powerless to do anything about it for Johnny. But maybe, maybe he was hoping that you know, with him going, maybe things would change. You know, it's like, oh, I, you know, I followed the choices you gave me, so maybe he lighten up on. Maybe that's the thought process that Davin might have had at the time, but. uh I love, like, the stupid remarks from your dad about, like, everything. It's just kind of like, oh, you know, it's like, oh, you're raising that boy Jack in a bubble. He's like, he's not being raised in a bubble. Hey, look at me. I'm wearing a sand suit. And then Davin's like, okay, that was terrible timing. And he's getting on Johnny about him being a Killjoy and everything. You know, I honestly keep forgetting the fact is that he actually is a level five. I mean, the whole Killjoy thing doesn't come up to me. I mean, you obviously bring up the whole Killjoy thing, but it's like, it doesn't play the role that it has previously because like they're doing other jobs as killjoys and that allows them to do stuff they might not have been able to do before because it gives them it's kind of a pass to be like oh i'm a killjoy so it gives you more access to certain places but the whole him being a level five doesn't really come up because it's not pertinent necessarily i mean it was pertinent at the time because it's like oh that's the highest level of killjoy and plus you know it means you can you can take warrants for kills and stuff like that so it's just, it's just a whole thing that it just doesn't play as big a role going forward because we're so focused on the whole thing like that's become the main focus so that a lot of that killjoy aspects kind of take fall to the wayside so I just think that's fascinating. But then it's also like his dad was like, yeah, and this this one, it's, he made complaints about dad. And he's like, look at this one over here. All he does is fly around and drink or something like that. 
He made some crazy remark like that. And then Johnny was like, no, we don't. And then Dab's kind of look behind their dad, kind of going, I don't know, man. And then his dad kind of raises his eyebrows. And Johnny's like, okay, sometimes we do that. It's not like it's all the time. It's like, he kind of is all the time. It's like in retrospect, it's not until other people bring it up that you're like, man, this Team Awesome. Was it, is it Team Awesome Force? I always forget because it always comes up when Turin is talking about them and everything. But it's like, yeah, like they, you don't realize until people point it out how much they drink about every little thing. You're like, man. And you're like, you legitimately do stay stockpiled on booze because there's even a comment by Pip like a couple episodes ago. It's like, man, do they have anything on this ship besides alcohol? And it's like, I don't think they do. It's like they probably don't even keep food up there. Maybe they do. I mean, that's kind of what it was kind of hinting at. But nevertheless. It is kind of still nice to kind of see where Johnny and Davin ended up because despite their dad, you know, that in spite of him, they became the great people that they are and they're in this position that they're in. And their dad trying to take credit for everything like, oh, I did the best I could. And Dav's like, no, you didn't. But he's like, you didn't. But I will, you know, when it comes to my own son. And that's kind of the sad thing because Dab's very overprotective of Jack, obviously, because, um... You know, it's just, I think it's just like, Daff has a very overprotecting personality. I mean, we see that definitely with Johnny. He's very protective of Johnny and anyone that he cares about. But it's like, this is also like, this is this is my boy. This is my son, no matter what the circumstances may be. Which I even love that Johnny tried to explain certain situate the whole, he tried to give a small gist of the situation to their dad. And their dad was just like, ah, oh, whatever, fine, don't tell me the truth. And it's like, I tried to tell you the truth, you didn't want to listen, so... You also got to see just how stubborn her damn dad is. Because Davin's like, dude, wait. Follow me. He's like, I follow nobody. He's like, stop shooting him in regular places. The whole thing, you need to do headshots. But he, he didn't want to listen. So, and ended up getting himself captured because of it. And so, kind of circling back to what I was saying about Jack. Is the fact that Jack wanted to kind of prove himself. Because he felt like in fear. Because he's like, look at my dad. He's such a badass. But me, I'm scared and I'm afraid. But, you know... Davin tried to make him feel better. It's like, it's okay to be afraid. He's like, when I went to the army, I was afraid, you know? Because I think he looked at having fear as being a bad thing, but it's like, no, being afraid is never a bad thing. It keeps you on edge. It keeps you smart about things, you know? You don't try and go, you know, if you weren't afraid, you might take crazy, crazy risks. You might kind of pull some Dutch moves if you weren't scared, you know? I mean, even Davin's kind of scared right now because he's just scared at every turn. Like, I don't know if my son's going to be okay. I don't want him mixed up in all of this. I got to do whatever I can to protect him, um, which included Jack. Well, for one, we see that he does have more of a precog ability. We got a little glimpse of it where it's like basically he can see, I guess for him, it's not like multiple outcomes. At the very least, it doesn't seem like it. It seems like it is like one set thing. Like obviously the vision of them all getting captured in that whole situation. And then there's the whole thing with um the Holen. Like he visualizes it. And he's like, oh, do you want to know how you're going to die? Which is kind of like, oh, that's some like almost some villain level stuff. I don't know. Like that seemed like something like, I don't know. And that was just kind of like a crazy line of like, ooh, whoa, that's kind of like I mean, to be fair, that kind of seems, I mean, in retrospect, you're kind of like, nah, not vill villainy, but it's like, it's such a specific line that you're kind of like, you wouldn't expect him to say, but it's like, yeah, that's probably something Dutch would probably say, though. So it's kind of like, yeah, it kind of fits him to do that. So it's like, it, you got to see exactly what he was going to do. So I thought that was kind of pretty neat. Like I said, we're expanding upon his abilities little by little. Because we already knew he had a little bit of something, because he could tell, like, he had a feeling. So it seems like it is more so... A foresight. Because in retrospect, what he said about Pip, about Pip not making it, now it's kind of like, oh, now we understand why. I think that might be implying the fact is, well, that could be taken two different ways now. Because one, it could be like, well, because I think he said you'll die before you get to her. So it's because I, Pip will ultimately die is what I'm, I'm taking from that. Like right now, even with Zeph trying to do everything she can to save him, I think Pip will die at the end of this. Or maybe it's going to be a situation where he dies and then like they're able to resuscitate him or something. Uh, because now in retrospect, it's like, oh yeah, because that spider in his head, if it's taken out, he dies. If it stays in him, he dies. So it's kind of like, it's a lose-lose situation. So I don't know. Like I said, maybe, or maybe that's kind of proof of potential futures he sees. So maybe it's like what he sees isn't a hundred percent guaranteed, but it maybe you know, some futures are more likely than others. Like things are constantly changing or, you know, cause that's the whole thing about, you know, seeing the future and stuff like that. It's like, it takes very, like there's so many variables. So it's like, can he see a hundred, like what's going to a hundred percent happen or can he see what might happen? You know, there's a big distinction between that, you know, so we'll see in the long run. 
This episode was also sad because uh, Johnny got reunited with a past love named Charlie, which is interesting. Um, I don't know the actress's name, but I've seen her in quite a few things. I can't place some of the things. I think one of the things I saw, and I think it's just kind of interesting because it's, you know, sci-fi and everything, but I know she was definitely in, like, one episode of Haven. She was definitely, she was one of the um, troubled in Haven, so I do distinctly remember. I forgot what her whole deal was. It was something with pictures. Um... If I, I, I don't remember it clearly, but I think that was her. I feel like I've seen her in other stuff, too. I just can't remember it. But basically, she's a new sheriff, and it's like all this stuff between her and Johnny. It's like, oh, there was sparks between them. But it's like, oh, she grew up. She was married, but she has kids. Um, it's interesting because, like, she made a reference to, like, the fact that her and Johnny were going to grow up, go to the stars, and, you know... Fr- find stuff, you know, princess and stuff like that. She's like, did you ever find your princess? And Johnny kind of doesn't really give an answer, which technically he did, the whole Dutch situation. I mean, she didn't really, that wasn't a princess, that was a queen type of thing. But you, you, you get what I'm saying. Because wasn't her hubby, like her hubby at the time, that whole harem situation, wasn't her hubby a, um, I bet when she, before she met Johnny, wasn't her hubby a prince or something? I thought he was. I don't remember. I'm, I'm blanking on the details. It's not like it's like that just came up to this season, but it's just like I'm blanking on it. So I guess technically, to a certain extent, it kind of worked like that, especially considering the whole Anila and Dutch thing, and kind of she plays that kind of like their whole thing is kind of that of a princess role to a certain extent. Especially when you think about the fact is that Anila is from one of the, like a crushy family. Well, you know, like she comes from a crushy family, so she is kind of royalty and is a princess. So it's kind of like, oh, it kind of still works out. But then it's kind of like, she's like, oh, I thought you out of anyone would have settled down is what Charlie said. And then Johnny was like, there was someone, but it didn't work out. I'm like, I'm uh, like, I, I can say like, I'm assuming that only person it could be referencing is Potter, which is kind of like, oh man, he's never really probably found like that whole situation with Potter. He's never found that with anybody else. I mean, maybe that's kind of been his reluctance to do that just because of the whole Potter situation. Plus, everything they're going through right now, not really the time to be searching for love. So, you know, their plates are kind of full. So, it's kind of sad. It turns out, oh, she betrayed them. I was like, ah, oh, I was like, I, I kind of didn't think that was. I was actually very, very surprised by that. You know, also something else that came up, I'm surprised it happened this episode. Davin using his powers to, like, blow up hole in heads and stuff like that. You you know, in retrospect, he has not used that at all this season, has he? I'm trying to think. I don't think he's used that, his powers at all. Like, is it, I mean, I guess it would take time. He needs to focus. And so he's not in a situation where he could use them without them, you know, getting him. But, um... Yeah, I was just I was just thinking about that. I was like, at no point did Davin just try to use his abilities. I guess because if you try, they'd shoot him or something like that. So, it, like I said, it needs to charge up. But it's like interesting. Not once at all this season he's used it so far. We have so I don't know. Maybe subsequently since the whole um, Jack thing, his powers have kind of gone a little kablo, or he just hasn't. They just haven't written a reason for him to use them yet. Potentially, I don't know. We'll, we'll see in the long run uh, whether anything comes from that or not. Like I said, I just thought that was kind of interesting. I feel like one of the last time he ta- last times he used his power was during the rack attack last season. I feel like that was the last time he used his abilities, but I could be 100 percent wrong about that. Wasn't the whole time him tapping into the green and meeting Anila? Was that before or after that? I want to say that was before, wasn't it? So yeah, him killing some hole with his powers, like when Johnny was being tortured and stuff like that. I think that was the last time we've seen him gonna actively uses ability but you know like i said maybe i'm misremembering and maybe he has done it this season i'm just misremembering there too as well so but nevertheless the charlie thing kind of sucks and you know it kind of hits johnny hard because johnny ends up tell, like she's like oh let's run away together he's like what about your kids she's like oh they have grandparents and it's like you know what do you have you know to hold on to it. He's like, my heart, something that you used to have. And she's like, oh yeah, how's that working out for you? Once again, but that ends up, you. no matter how much you want to shame Johnny for having his heart, and it's like, oh, how's it working out for you? His heart is what makes him strong. I mean, it's kind of interesting too, you would say that, considering the fact that Johnny kind of went through the whole heart struggle situation, considering the fact is that he went through the whole hauling process earlier this season and everything. So it's just kind of interesting when you actually break that down. But it's like, this is someone he once cared about, and he just thought kind of the world of, and now it's kind of like, oh, you're kind of a shitty person. I'd assume they just arrested her and kind of sent her off. I, I guess on some level, it kind of makes you feel, had to make them feel good too, because it's like, oh yeah, like, you know, 
like in the sense of like, oh, if only they had that power and position to do that when they were younger to their dad, get him arrested. But I guess he never did anything. He was just kind of a piece of crap. They have no intentions of ever coming back home. And it's just kind of like things are kind of sour between them and their dad. It's not like, oh, and I, I think that's kind of nice, too, because it's not like everything's resolved. It's not like, oh, man, like, oh, we're good. Yeah, my our dad has changed. It's like, no, he's kind of still the piece of shit he's always been. And he just tries to pretend like he's better. He's just like he wants to rewrite history to make it seem like, oh, he should we should all be glad because of everything he put us through. We got to where we are. It's like, once again, we got here in spite of you, not because of you, you know. You weren't a good dad. You weren't a good parent. No matter what your circumstances were, you didn't take care of them. You were abusive. You were just a drunk asshole, like, power tripping and stuff, you know? So, I did like the line of, like, you know, it's like, oh, man, they had had, had dad for, like, an hour, and they still haven't given him back. It's like, that's crazy. And then, you know, it's like, oh, tell me, we got to go save dad. And Johnny's like, do we really have to? And they kind of both turn and look at Jack, and he's just like, yeah, we gotta save dad. Yeah, of course. We'll always, always save dad. And there's so reluctant, such reluctance in their voice, all of it. But, uh, Jack coming through in the end, dad ended up, you know, trusting him a little bit. He's like, oh, you, you could have been so much danger. But it's like, oh, look, my son, he brought us guns. All right, here's your gun, son. You know, so I thought that was kind of pretty neat. So. Everything's kind of good and progressing on that front. We do hear that fact is that Jack is like, maybe he wants to go to Del Sea, try and find his mom, because. Which, once again, we still have no idea where the hell she is. We have not seen her since she claimed that she was going to go back to Crash. So, we have no idea. But that, that trinket she left him is supposed to make it so she can track him, he can track her down. Because it's like, I need to go back. I need to go to be with my mom. You know, it put me in a safe place. Do you think my dad would know? It's like, yeah, that's all he's ever wanted. Because Jack wants to be removed from the situation. Because if he's somewhere safe, Davin doesn't have to worry about him. Kind of go full blast. And they can all kind of go all kick ass on this situation. To try and um, stop, like, stop the lady and everything that's going down. So he kind of wants to remove himself from the situation. So he, and I guess in his mind, like, so he isn't an hindrance. So... We'll see where it goes down on that front. But on you know, the other side of things, we had the whole Zeph and Dutch situation. Well, it turns out uh, the thing that Klein left is a spore of some kind. But it's slowly decaying. Ever since they took it with them, it's been slowly decaying. So they got to fire out, figure out the components to it. Um, I love that whole thing about, like, oh, using a centrifuge and then, like, you know, it's like, oh, removing water from a salad and then Dutch is like, uh, you, tossing salad. No one wants to hear about how you and Pip toss salad, each other's salads or whatever. And the, which, me personally, I was like, I know they make dirty jokes. Maybe I, I get it, but it's like, that's such a dirty joke. I wouldn't expect, I guess, because it's like, you have to understand the joke for it to be like, but it's like for you, I don't know. I think I let that slip my mind because it's just kind of like, wow, sci-fi let something like that. It's so ooh, risque. I don't know why. You just like, This show is all about making dirty jokes and stuff like that, especially amongst this trio and stuff, especially Don, Johnny and uh, Dutch. But like uh, Zeph didn't get the joke at all. And she's like, we got to work on your like dirty jokes, uh, Zeph, because like, man, if Johnny was here, that would have killed and then Dutch doing a risky thing, basically circling around a sun to get it to, you know, giving it enough force to separate that they could find out the components, which they did. But Dutch ended up passing out because of it. Lucy wasn't back in automatic control, which we had Zef using, trying to find a solution for the situation. Burns the console using the hologram that she is to heat it up. And that was enough to wake Dutch up to kind of give control back to Lucy So. But I think it was kind of nice to hear what Zeph had to say because it was kind of like she kind of snaps at uh, Dutch because it's like because it's like Dutch takes too many risks. But at the same time, Dutch is like, oh, but you're too like safe about things, which is something they both can kind of take from. Because the thing is, like, because it's something Zeph was kind of like basically and it's something Dutch kind of does. It's kind of like you're pushing away the people that you love, that love and care about you. All they want to do is try and be there for you. And you're kind of pushing them away you don't have to kind of be as risky as you are you don't have to basically it's okay to open up to someone you don't have to like burn everything down essentially you know and it's just kind of you know it's just like let the people who care about you care about you and try to do their best to help you like you know and it's like oh we're talking about pip 
And, you know, she explains Pip's situation to Dutch, where Dutch is like, you do what you normally do. You examine the city, you take the truth of the situation, and then you kick, it, kick its ass with science. So, but I'm wondering, will, uh, uh, God, Dutch take that to heart? And it seems like maybe she does, because her and Davin, she admits, like, yeah, you had a right to be pissed at me, but the fact that you left, it made me feel like, you know, it hurt me, because it made me feel like you didn't think I was, like, you know... I would even have the, like, I am incapable of being better or doing better, you know, it made me feel like you didn't have faith in me that, you know, we could look, get past this and Davin apologize, but it's like, don't give up on us, it's just like, I'm not, and she's like, I'm not either, so, they're good, again, so, there's always kind of something, you know, with Davin and Dutch, you know, so there's always kind of up and down, there's always, you know, there's too much connections on so many level between them even more so than what you know has been through the course of the series of just like their their main plot but also just everything is peeling away from them because it's like oh yeah there's the anila connection because now anila has a connection to dutch i mean davin in the sense of like their son jack which is technically his and del Sea's son is like that whole thing but then what we see at the end is dutch gets this symbol burned to her back so i'd assume that has something to do with Anila because they are connected so either that's being burned into Anila's body or that's something she's putting in herself a mess trying to get a message to Dutch maybe she couldn't get one any other way because we don't know how the things are going on her front about her fight against keeping the lady in check the lady does have another green source as we know, found out about last episode what's interesting though is I didn't even look at it this way until Zeph was like, oh yeah, we do have access to a green pool. So, you know, kind of looking at things half uh, uh, full type of situation is like, there's a way to kind of go in there to get to Anila. And it's like, yeah, but it's like also, you know, the double-edged side of things. So I thought that was kind of pretty neat. But overall, a very interesting episode. I'm very interested to see uh, where the next episode takes us. We are nearing the end of the season because this was like episode eight. There's typically only 10 episodes per season, so... Only two more episodes. I'm very interested to see like where all this is going, uh, in particular in the next episode, and how this all kind of will eventually wrap up later on in the season finale. So we'll just have to wait and see. But really, that's all I want to talk about in this episode. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, love life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.